Your Excellencies, ladies and uh, gentlemen, welcome um, here in the Hague Academy of uh, International Law for the very first The Hague Debate. In particular, I should like to extend a warm welcome to the participants in uh, this uh, debate, Mrs. Mees, Ivo de Boer, Professor Piquet, Professor Zetta, and the moderator, of course, uh, Barry uh, Thorn. And a cordial welcome to uh, Jan Hoek, the Director General of Radio Netherlands Worldwide. This debate sets the ball rolling for a whole series of international debates on diverse aspects of international law and international cooperation in the domain of peace and justice. The De Haag uh, debates are the outcome of a partnership between Radio Netherlands Worldwide and the city of The Hague. This year, for four more debates of this kind are due to take place. As mayor of The Hague, I have several reasons for being especially pleased with this new initiative. The Hague is the international city of peace and justice, the fourth UN city. Our city has an enormous storehouse of knowledge about international law and international cooperation. But the big thing is, the knowledge we have here is actually put into practice as well. And that mix of knowledge and practical application gives The Hague its unique profile. Of course, The Hague does its utmost to ensure that all those tribunals, courts, international organizations, as well as their staff are housed in the best possible way. That goes with, uh, without saying, but that alone is not enough. The Hague can only live up to its name as an international city and as an international crossroads of legal knowledge if the right kind of academic, of, of, of let's say climate prevails, and academic climate that is, of course. A city, therefore, we support the activities that forge ties between all those knowledge institutes and international organizations. At the same time, we make sure that the knowledge is accessible, as accessible as possible. We're convinced that this is how we can modestly contrib contribute to the evolution of international law, which is something that, more or less, our reputation obliges us to do. Examples I'm thinking of are the, the Hague Academic Coalition and the, the Hague Justice portal, an inter internet portal accessing a wealth of information on the international law used intensively worldwide. But even so, we had the feeling that, well, something was missing. You can encourage academic cooperation all you want, you can do your best to make the sources of knowledge up, well, in the best way accessible for everybody but you might still be missing an essential ingredient, and that is debate. The fact that scholarship thrives on a constant exchange of ideas, on debate, on dialogue. And what's more, this is an excellent means of involving large group of people in topical issues relating to peace and justice. The Hague debates focus on a wide audience, academics, Students, journalists, staff of international organizations, entrepreneurs, and all citizens who are interested in the subject. That's why we, the city, we are really pleased that we are organized this series of uh, debates in close conjunction with Radio Netherlands Worldwide. This important uh, radio broadcasting organization, Radio Netherlands Worldwide Broadcast, spent a lot of time on matters relating to international law, and they reach a wide and still, still wider audience. And the Hague is very keen to speak to those people who are not professionally engaged, to bring the message to those who are not professionally engaged with the subject. Peace and justice are matters that concern us all, especially in the Hague, when you realize how many people are here or earn their living thanks to these tribunals, courts, international organizations. Justice is being done in The Hague and people are working hard 
on a more secure and peaceful world. Why shouldn't even more people be getting this message? And the Hague debates can help into this direction. The subject of uh, the first debate will do, uh, we'll do that, sure. Dealing with an issue which is of uh, well, enormous importance and concerns us and the future generations, climate change. There are many practical um, and academic questions uh, to ask here, and I leave those questions and, and, and the interesting answers to the participants of the first De Haag uh, debate. One ele element, though, often forgotten is an important one, and that is uh, the migration issue. Flow of migrants and refugees are a phenomenon of every age, of course, and from the past, the examples are legion of a positive contribution of migrants and refugees, the, the contribution they have made to the development of the country of their choice. In 2002, close to here in the Peace Palace, the declaration of the Hague on the future of refugee and migration policy was submitted to the then United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan. That declaration was a signal to the world, don't be so uptight about migrants and refugees. Don't retreat in advance behind high walls and try instead to tackle migration in a positive and in an innovative way. From The Hague, the think tank network organization The Hague Process on Refugees and Migration is giving concrete shape to the contents of the De Hague Declaration. Cities have traditionally attracted migrants. In the past, they came from rural areas and now they come from far afield. The fact is that towns and cities cannot survive without the influx from elsewhere. And at the same time, cities offer newcomers the opportunity to develop, to emancipate themselves and to become integrated into the existing society, provided that we tackle the issues involved here, the issues at stake, in the right way, with justice and with determination. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with um, these words, I should like to ask the participants to take their places. And I declare that the Hague debates, the first round of the Hague debate, many more will follow, open. Thank you.